y'all it's audrey this is a very big episode and the last of this series partnering with rive so in this episode we are focusing mostly on the state machine and finally making everything interactive and um, adding a bit um, of animation to all the you know last little things um, to kind of help you know amp up the experience a little bit everything's on the table now um, and it either works or it doesn't um, and i'm aiming for it to work <laughs> but something that's going to be revisited this time around that I didn't do in the last episode is uh, attempting to uh, create meshes and binding those with the bones and like the skeleton that we made with our rig and our character and everything. So we're going to try to do some of that with um, with our character and like the outfits. Um, and then in the state machine, we're going to start doing some mixing of animations. So similar to how I set up the idle animation of the character, mixing that with, you know, all the different timelines. So like adding it on an outfit and different facial expressions, stuff like that. Um, so mixing all of those things together. And then more importantly, uh, at the end of all this, um, adding the actual interactivity uh, with all the UI elements that was set up and being able to actually toggle through and interact with everything that we have on the page and getting to essentially make our own character out of this. So anywho, let's get into the final stretch of this project. Starting with um, the mesh side of things, when it comes to vectors versus rasters, when doing vector artwork and binding bones, it's a little more straightforward in terms of like them talking to each other. And for raster artwork, um, that's where meshes come in to help bind um, kind of the, the independent um, you know, polygons and stuff like that. If you think about like 3D, the more polygons you have, the more form that you have. Um, similar with using meshes and raster artwork, um, the more points that you have, the more, uh, you know, bits of articulation that you have if you want to attach that to um, a skeleton or a target and kind of move certain things around. Starting with uh, this rock torso that we have. So I'm going to go over here to the right where it says create mesh. By default, you just kind of get some basic two polygons here, but we wanna be a little more uh, detailed than that. So I'm gonna hit new contour, which is the pen tool here. And I am going to work on outlining this torso. And you can have as many or as little of points as you want. And I think it just comes down to the level of detail with like articulation and um, moving your artwork around to make it feel uh, more 3D. And so when I complete that path, it automatically adds in all of these points here. And so technically this is complete, um, but I still have um, this line uh, with the pen tool attached. And if I want to add more points of articulation here, I can just kind of click wherever and it's going to automatically connect everything together. So you don't have to worry about completing the path from here. Um, this is going to be a constant um, until you say done editing, which I think I am. Uh, under the PNG here uh, with the rock torso, under that is where we have our mesh. And something else that's really cool um, that I kind of discovered here. So for instances where I have kind of my like five different skin tones and like in this case, you know, there's like a sleeve attached to it, um, but it's all the same shape. Like there is no difference in terms of, you know, position or rotation or anything like that. So I have the mesh that I made here for this arm. So I'm able to copy and paste this to the other ones. It also includes the, um, the bones as well that's being bound. Um, so I'm going to control C and then I'll just control V on that as well and you can see that it applied the exact same way to that asset as well by clicking on the mesh layer here uh, you can see over here as well um, it kept the bones and I'm pretty sure it keeps the weight of those as well so if I were to edit mesh click and drag over all these points it kept the same weight that I assigned to the first one so pretty cool um, you can just copy and paste meshes like that um, for instances like this in terms of uh, what to do next I'm pretty sure from here we go to over to bind bones and then by clicking bind bones it's gonna have this window um, this live window where it's gonna ask you 
which bones? <laughs> which bones do you want to bind? Um, so with the torso here and looking at the bones that I have in my root group, I would think the waist, so it has that selected, and then this main like spine. I would think maybe at least the shoulders. I don't want to get too low with like the, the like hip bones down here. So I think I'm done. So I'll hit done up here at the top right. From here to get a little more detailed, um, so if I go to edit mesh, and then you have all of the points um, kind of live here. If you click and drag over any of them, um, you start getting these percentages here on the right, which is essentially weighting them, you know, kind of designating what amount of influence you want to have in any certain area of that skeleton, if that makes sense. I would say most of the influence goes to like the shoulders. And so I think where the waist is, we don't want it to go all the way to the waist. So if I do this 50% and that 50%, this definitely takes a little bit of like finagling and practicing with um, depending on the project that you're using. And so from here, I'm going to apply this to all of the outfit pieces. BRB, I'm going to do this real quick. Took a minute, but um, I think I have my meshes where I want them to be. This really depends on how much you want movement and like dynamic kind of movement within your character. Um, so now uh, what I want to do is um, I have two of my kind of UI elements over here for like the arrow button and then the checkbox. Um, but what I want to also do is the skin tone options over here. So um, going to that category and just kind of look at each of the uh, skin tones that I have here. I have uh, all of them in solo groups um, and then I have a regular state and a hover state. So with this entry state here this is just kind of where you know nothing's really happening um, and then this carrot here is the transition going into the static idle no hover. Again this is where nothing's happening. Um, and so kind of thinking about how we transition from here into all the other timelines. Um, so thinking through the, again, the user experience. Um, so from here with no hover, we would want to add a hover animation. And then from there, we add the hover static. And then when, it, when we're hovering over it, and then we decide to not hover over it anymore, we'll do the release hover animation. So the deeper you get into this and the more practice you kind of have with doing the state machine, the more it'll make sense. Um, this is only my third. <laughs> These are literally the three um, like interactions I have so far. So yeah, definitely takes a bit of practice and just kind of thinking through like how it should work ideally, just getting into it. Um, so again, if you hover around the box here, you have this little dot um, that you can use to transition over. Then we have our inputs and listeners, which are going to be super important. Going just timeline by timeline here, going from the static idle, no hovering, to hovering, I think we'll want to add a, a boolean, which is a true or false kind of input here. We'll call this hover. And then going into the transition here, um, we'll want to add a condition. And then you can see after adding an input here, any uh, input that you add here will be listed here for conditions and so we want to add hover this transition saying that um, when the condition is true um, that we will do the hover animation so that should be correct there similarly we're going to add a transition backwards back to the no hover click on that arrow that's pointing toward the no hover add a condition add the hover back again and say false. So it's saying that when we're not hovering, um, it's gonna go back to this state. And again, the state machine is pretty much in the name where you're just figuring out how to make all of the different states uh, work together. And then uh, also to another thing that you can edit here um, are some of the like exit times um, and just like how you wanna treat uh, the animation. So I'm gonna check allow exit during transition. This is essentially saying that like, when your cursor is over this button and it leaves at any time, it doesn't have to play through full animation of something, if that makes sense. Like, it can leave early. So I'll, I'll go to the checkbox here as an example um, that I worked on yesterday. So if I hit play on the state machine, so we'll see the idle box is unchecked. We hover over it. 
but I don't have to let it play um, the whole time. And then I check the box. Not not the best example, but um, but essentially just saying that, you know, allowing exit during a transition, it doesn't have to play through a full transition if you have like an animation or something. Um, and then we uh, want to add some listeners. So I'll just call this first one hover over button. And then after making a listener, you'll notice that um, you have to select a target for that. Um, so this is, this essentially has to kind of go back to um, kind of your artwork in general. So I have the skin tone button selected, this whole surface area here when the cursor is over that. Um, and I can, sign, I can assign it um, an action here. So when we have the pointer entering into that area, we can select our input, which is hover, and then we'll set that to true because this is for the hover action or listener when the pointer enters. Um, you can set these to these other options here, but you can only do one at a time. So anything that's under the pointer enter listener, uh, we can add as many uh, different uh, input changes or events or targets or whatever. And then by clicking play, you know, you can kind of test things out. Clicking through, you know, transitions, your timeline, um, your listeners and stuff just to kind of see what needs to be edited um, helps a lot. It's a process. So starting out the state machine here, I'm able to now hover over the animation um, and it goes straight into static. So I think the key part of this working is in the transition. Um, giving the exit time 100% so that, you know, when the drop shadow comes down, it does its full animation before resting in that final state. Um, so I think this exit time here is uh, super important, but we have the hover animation working. And so now we'll need to figure out how to kind of do the opposite where um, when we're not hovering, um, it'll do the release hover animation. So I think to do that, we'll need to add a transition from the hover static to the release hover animation. And then going to that transition, I'll try allowing exit during transition, um, you know, for hovering or not. And so when we release the hover, um, it should go back to the static idle um, state here. So I think this is where we go back to our listeners here. So I have an unhover button. Um, and so we don't have anything under this yet. So pointer exit, do an input change, make that hover and make that false. And again, all of these are referencing the same target here. So the listener is is really like, other than the timelines, one of the main key components to referencing back to your artwork, if I'm gathering that right. Oh my God, it worked. Hell yeah, see, okay. So we hover and then releasing it. Oh, and then it goes back to the static. See, guys, we figured it out. So a web like this, I've found pretty common when it comes to um, states like this, where, you know, it, it's kind of a loop, right? When you do one bit of interaction and then another bit of interaction, it goes back to kind of its native state. And so now we'll want to add in um, the click. So again, I think this is where we go back to our listeners. And so I have the click down selected here in the listeners um, and then we'll add an input change. I might actually need to add a timeline for the click animation even though it'll pretty much just be the hover static. So I'll, I just duplicated that hover static timeline and just renamed it to click um, and I did end up adding kind of another bit of web in between the hover and release hover animations um, just so that thinking of like deciding on you know which skin tone to use and stuff um, there's a seamless transition in between and you can see that uh, interacting down below uh, but it shows what those static states also look like if you do just stay um, either on or off that button. Nice thing to figure out. Again, it takes a little bit of um, just trial and error with some of this. Um, but in terms of the click animation, I think I'm going to add another layer for that. Um, so we'll do the static one going into clicked here. And I think it can just be as simple as this um, with making these talk to each other. So going down here, um, adding the condition of clicking, I think. We'll do the hover, I think. And the hover's true, that's true. And then when it goes to the clicked, um, that will fire. And then when it's clicked again, it'll go back to this. 
I think. Oh, nice. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah, so this is where the clicked animation uh, state machine is like super simple and this one's definitely a little more, a little more complex. As I've mentioned before, uh, the sponsor of this video and this entire series is Rive. Rive is the latest and greatest motion tool uh, meant for designers and animators and developers, um, again, to kind of bridge the gap between those three things. So if you're interested in learning about Rive and just messing around with the tool, I think uh, for the free plan, you get three free projects to kind of mess around with. So definitely take advantage of those. And again, like I've said before, look at the Rive 101 series that they have on their YouTube channel and definitely dig around in the community tab and all of the projects that the community has uploaded because you can go in there, look through their file and just see how everything was constructed from the ground up. And if you wanted to take it a step further, you can remix their file too if you wanted to do an iteration of that. Now back to the video. So the biggest thing here is to have layers of animation. And I think a good way to think about this is looking at your inputs and looking at the layers in your state machine because ultimately they will reflect one another in a way, if that makes sense. So the inputs are essentially going to be the like bits of interactivity that you'll see probably in like the community tab. And each of those, um, you know, are either like a trigger, boolean, whatever. But the way that they are layered here, um, and this is something that I think is super interesting and took me in a sec, took me a second to grasp. But ultimately, this is like the base of it all. Um, so even without clicking, if you just ignored like the clicking part, this should be just like a constant, being able to hover and everything, and then clicking is an interaction that you add on top of that. Um, it really does, again, take just like trying stuff out, seeing what works and what doesn't, looking at projects in the community tab, watching tutorials to see like how simple some of this can actually be and where you kind of need to learn to like separate your animations. Um, so I have my hovering, then I needed to add a different layer of animation for the clicking itself, just because I don't think that could really register all in one. Uh, learned that, um, but we got we got our like third main uh, bit of like interactivity here with this, so super excited about that. Um, so I'm going to duplicate this and just edit the the color inside of it, so I have all the skin tones, and then we'll start officially. <laughs> getting into our main comp and starting to like add all these elements together and hopefully making things interactive. Okay, we've got this like light ray of God uh, blessing this project right now. So I'm gonna take advantage of that <laughs> uh, just to kind of, again, show like that some of this stuff is actually working. Um, so what I did, uh, so I made my other skin tones up here as like buttons as different artboards. And then I went in here, um, you can see this little icon here means uh, nested artboard, which again is going to be called components. Um, and dragged that in and then I think I scaled that down to like 30% so it matched uh, my original design. Um, I have play on my state machine right now and you can see it works. It works and with the little like clicking animation and everything. It's super subtle but like I love it. It's exactly what I need for this. So now I'm going to add in uh, my other artboards as components, um, which right now they're nested artboards. I'm going to uh, go down to the artboard uh, tool here, click on nested artboard, and then similar to like groups and solos, uh, you can kind of just click anywhere, but I'm going to try and be a little more accurate with uh, the position here. And then you can literally select from your other artboards. And so I'm going to select the yellow one. I want to also drop that down to 30% and then just roughly get the position to the original design and then move that into my group here. And then I will do this a couple more times for the other ones. And then real quick, just for funsies, play the state machine again. And then the nice thing too is that um, I have all of these components selected um, and I'm able to do some basic like aligning and everything so I can get it uh, nice and pretty where I want it. Um, so now they're all uniform and looking really nice. So just for funsies again, get all that interaction. Ugh, 
I love it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go in and pretty much do what I just did for the skin tone buttons and add that into our other bits of UI over here. I'm actually pretty excited about it. I think after getting some of this stuff to actually work, I'm feeling more confident about it. And then if we go into our animate tab, kind of went ahead and just uh, similar to the last bit of um, starting to implement everything with the state machine. Um, I made a ton of new layers um, that are basically housing um, all of these different interactions for all of the state changes essentially. So we've got, you know, our idle stance um, that is always going to be happening. And if we go to that animation, it's purely just a looping uh, ping pong animation, um, just kind of messing with like the the head and then this arm swaying here. But again, still using the singular skeleton um, and the target, like the targets of the uh, for the joints that we made. Um, this idle stance will apply to any of the positions that we have. And then if we start to kind of click on some of this stuff, find that it's actually working, which is amazing. Uh, definitely took uh, some trial and error for some of this stuff and just kind of figuring things out. But once you kind of get into that groove state, um, that flow state of like connecting the right pieces together, it's, it's really satisfying to see everything start to like work. So we can see all the hover interactions um, are working uh, that we kind of set up with our components uh, slash um, nested artboards over here. And then with this web essentially saying um, the entry state is starting out with no jewelry at all. Um, so nothing is being toggled on up here. And then after we click on, you know, whatever box is being clicked on, we got one through six here, um, then it will go to this transition here will make it go to the checked state, uh, which is, you know, this kind of first level here. And then if we click it again with that transition, it'll go to the unchecked state. And then if we wanted to check it again, going back to the checked state, um, of just having uh, the transitions um, in between you know, essentially these two states. So yeah, it just takes a little bit of like logical thinking um, and just kind of assigning the rules to everything. And obviously there's a ton of inputs and listeners here, um, but essentially the fact that it all works is amazing for me <laughs> and I'm, I'm good with that. And then yeah, just like looking at all of these other um, states here, they're, they're more pretty simple. Um, so like for the skin tone, um, you know, starting out in any state, um, I think the blue skin tone is where we usually start out anyway, but being able to click on any of these, um, no matter what state you're on. So if you're on the pink and you want to go to blue, um, that any state node here um, can help kind of transition to that. And then for all of the like carrot toggles and stuff, uh, thinking of it as like a cycle because it kind of is, you know, where it loops uh, back to the beginning and then being able to have transitions that go backwards as well, um, you know, for each of these interaction buttons here. Um, so it's kind of cool to see kind of the different webs of interaction uh, that we have in the state machine here, depending on what you want to do. Um, so like the skin tone is definitely more of like an any state um, being able to just click freely. The toggle carrot buttons are more of like a cyclical kind of interaction. And then the jewelry is definitely more of like a, a web um, that kind of goes back to the checked or unchecked states. And the last thing that we're going to do actually uh, is kind of incorporate a very new feature with Rive, which is um, some audio, uh, which they didn't have before. But I think as of um, early April, they've incorporated just some like initial um, sounds and stuff that you can kind of incorporate with your with your animations and everything. So, so we're just going to mess around with that a little bit. If you go to the top left menu up here um, and go to browse sounds, uh, there's kind of a initial library within Rive um, that are kind of categorized um, and all kinds of different things. Um, there's not too many sounds within each of these yet, but this is a great start. Um, so I'm going to look up the a, an applause um, sound effect. Um, and so there's only three here um, and I'm sure there's other descriptor words that you could use as well. Um, but you can play them within Rive here and just kind of get a sense of uh, what what each of these sounds are. I'm probably going to use this one here. So I'll click the plus button 
And then it's going to add it to your assets panel um, all the way at the bottom. So this is a pro feature, um, but for this video, um, I'm able to at least kind of showcase it a little bit. And so all your audio stuff is going to be added down here at the very bottom. And similar to um, adding any other assets to your composition here, I'm just going to click and drag it. Um, I don't want it to be uh, like this in the composition necessarily, so I'm just going to keep it off of the artboard. Um, but I'm going to see if I can kind of mess with um, incorporating this sound clip uh, into an interaction. Um, so maybe when we're flipping through uh, the different uh, like instruments, um, so essentially like different band members, uh, maybe there's a bit of that applause, um, almost as, as if you're kind of like introducing a new character or something, a new band member. And if we go back to the assets panel and kind to double click on that uh, audio clip here you can see this like tertiary uh, wide panel here above your state machine um, and this is where you can view the waveform of that um, and then you kind of get this uh, like crosshair cursor here where you can click and drag over any portion of this uh, audio clip or I assume you know being able to import your own audio clips um, and being more specific from here. Um, so if I just want to have uh, this initial part here, um, so if I want to have maybe like five seconds of that, nothing too long, um, I can press the plus button and create a clip. From here, you'll see uh, that it kind of drops down under that uh, main clip here. And so if we go back to our hierarchy or like our main layers panel here, um, I'm going to see where I'd want to add that in because um, I don't really think it matters in terms of the layers. It's going to be more important within the timelines here. I'll just click um, and create a group and just call this audio. Now I'll just click and drag that under there just so we know where it is. And then taking a look at um, kind of our interactions um, and like within the state machine, uh, when clicking through the different uh, instruments here. So in the instrument tab and then going to our uh, timelines and animations over here and the four different uh, timelines that we have here um, whenever, you know, an instrument or a band member is being changed out. So I'm going to have the audio clip selected and then I think if I just add a keyframe here where it says play audio, um, and add that to that timeline. And it might only make it just one second because that's how long um, the uh, timeline is for, um, for the different instruments. So right off the bat, I'm not sure if you can hear, but at least you can kind of see the levels um, off to the right. That's uh, actually working. Uh, and then let's see if we click the next player. And then uh, making sure here on the right too, it'll reference um, whatever audio assets that you have in your assets panel. Um, but I wanna make sure that I have the clip one selected so it's not playing the entire um, like 30 second clip and just making sure that's the same for all of these other ones here. And then if you go over to your inputs and listeners, um, you can kind of specify too with some audio. So if I go to my instrument next and previous buttons, which is essentially what's happening um, in this like interaction box here um, with these like carrot buttons, um, you're able to add um, a fire event. So along with um, assigning it that instrument next action, um, you can also add a fire event um, change that will report your audio clip. So if we play this, um, I don't know if you can hear, uh, but at least you can see the levels um, that the uh, sound is working. And if I click next uh, for the different instruments, it'll play again. And right now it's a little overlapping. You can kind of see that on the right up here um, with the sound bar that it'll just kind of keep playing the more that you, you know, click on the button and it starts to overlap a bit. Um, so I'm not quite sure um, what within the state machine um, I can do to fix that at the moment, but uh, just the fact that it's working uh, when it's being played is super, super cool. And I think there's a lot of great opportunity, um, especially with like UX UI um, and being able to add a little more nuance, a little more um, of that immersiveness with interacting with buttons and stuff like that. So yeah, this is the project. Um, and the fact that I got everything to work uh, the way that I wanted to, and to be able to add a little more customization to like the background and stuff like that um, and just have everything work. Um, super proud of myself. Uh, this is definitely not something that I do 
um, very often in the design world and with motion graphics. Uh, but but to get everything to work um, and to be able to add a little bit of animation to all of the interactions as well um, is just super, super cool. Um, so yeah, this is going to be part of the Rive community. And, and obviously, you know, if anyone wants to remix this or just kind of see how it was done, um, there's a lot of layers <laughs> to this project and certainly could have been probably more precise and a little more um, concise uh, just with the amount of assets and everything. Um, but like I say, um, done is better than perfect sometimes. And I think uh, this project is one of those cases. I'm just super glad to have uh, reached the finish line with with getting some of those main um, main brief points tackled that I wanted to tackle. Hey guys, uh, we're here uh, fast forwarding a couple days um, after the project is done to get my uh, husband to test out the project and just to kind of play around with it and have him make his own character. So we're going to do that now. <laughs> Alrighty. This is more so stuff that's like part of the state machine. You don't really have to worry about this, but uh, you're going to make your own character. Okay. Um, you're part of the band called the Oddballs just so you're aware, you know, how you see yourself in this or just, you know, an alter ego. You've got jewelry options, um, facial expression stuff. Cool. My thought process is creatively. Uh, <laughs> creatively. I don't think I'm wearing the right outfit. I'm talking about me personally. <laughs> Do we have a drummer? <laughs> so yeah, when you change an instrument, Is this with every change? No, it's just okay. the instrument. So emo, rock, grunge. I think visually, I think even though I'm more, even, hello? Even though I'm more in the rock world, what I enjoy? I think the emo design is the coolest. Mm -hmm. Now skin tone. Kind of took some inspiration from like the gorillas. Yeah, stuff. totally. Kind of yeah, I can see that. Fun. But notice how all the buttons kind of react to when you hover over them. Isn't that nice? That is, that's a nice touch. <laughs> I'm really proud of you. Thank you. Um, I might come back to the skin tone. Right now I'm rocking with this yellow. I think that's cool. The hair though, I, I did have a mohawk at one point. What? Yeah, a little... <laughs> Uh, I'm a little shy, embarrassed. I think this is probably the coolest. I think it goes with the mohawk and the and the and the swag, and the, guy the guy liner. I think I mean I think this is <laughs> grumpy, this is grumpy. pretty much me on a daily. Yeah. These all these are like different like facial piercings. Facial piercings. Okay. So, oh, and you can choose multiple. Yeah. Definitely gonna go with the double earrings, the eyebrow, and then the background. Well, that's just complimentary. Orange is my favorite color. We don't have an orange skin tone. No. So I think I'm gonna go orange background. I think this is it. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's their name? Their name is Jeremy Kyle. Jeremy Kyle, yes. I love him. Yes. <laughs> You're welcome. Drummer for the oddballs, everyone. Totally Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> Thank you guys so much again for watching this uh, entire series partnering with Rive. I know it was definitely a journey to get here, but super appreciate you sticking around. If you're just starting out in Rive, I hope this was super helpful in just learning uh, a couple things uh, with a project from start to finish. And if you're trying to learn Rive, again, uh, check out their YouTube channel, the 101 series, um, all the resources that they have, especially the community tab within uh, Rive's website itself. And definitely feel free to have fun with this project as well and playing around with it in the Rive community tab too. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.